Hey, it's Video Bob, and I searched the internet looking all over the place for how to change the oil in a Rolls Royce Phantom. I looked everywhere and I couldn't find a video or any information about this at all. So I'm going to help take care of this for you. Okay, so let's say you've gone out and you got yourself a used Rolls Royce Phantom like my 2004 Phantom that I've got. It's 15 years old. It's got 75,000 miles on it. And I want to change the oil on it without taking it to Rolls Royce and paying them hundreds of dollars to do it when I can do it myself. I've got my own rack. I've got my own lift. Now, the first thing you got to do is remove the belly pan. All right, there's two belly pans. There's uh, a, a forward one and then a rear one. And uh, the bigger one is the one you really want to get to because that's the one that's got the oil filter in there. Now, this is an enclosed oil filter. Now, you can run down to AutoZone or any place and ask for the oil filter. It's only going to cost you like five to ten bucks. And you can cross-reference your engine with the BMW 760Li and get the same oil filter that uses that same V12 engine. I bought the oil filter for like five bucks. All right, just on a side note, this is the belly pan that runs up underneath the car. We've leaned it up over here against this table. This thing cost almost $2,000 from Rolls-Royce. Now, mine was broken. We fiberglass this. I had my guy Omar work on this. Check it out. He, he, he made this panel to fill in the hole. We riveted it in place and then fiberglassed in the cracks. And I think it came out perfect. I mean, look at that. It looks factory, right? The bottom side isn't as pretty, but we fixed it. And chances are your belly band is probably broken just also. And uh, with this, it is an easy way to save yourself a lot of money and to reinforce and make it better than it would have been. And we just used uh, like an ABS kind of a foam plastic kind of stuff. And it works. It works awesome. All right, now, assuming that you've removed the plastic belly pans that go under the car and assuming that you have the car supported. Now, I have two two-ton jacks. I have one on each end helping to support the car just to make sure it doesn't wobble. Just thought I'd throw that in. Now, what you've got up here is you've got this plastic oil filter enclosure. You need yourself a, what is this? This is a 24 millimeter. It goes on there. And you're just gonna use a wrench to take this off and uh, that's how you're gonna get the filter up. But first, you wanna drain the oil. All right, having a look up under here now, you're gonna wonder where you gotta drain the thing from. Now, don't make the mistake and drain the transmission over here. You don't wanna do that. Now, there's your oil filter enclosure, which has a drain built into it. Now, you can drain a little bit of oil out of there, but that's not what you're looking for. Hidden on the other side of this sway bar, there's our little buddy hiding out there. There's our drain. Now, you'll notice up in there there's a crush washer this is an allen head okay there's no way to not get oil on that bar but that's just what's going to happen so you're going to drain your oil from there then you can also relieve pressure from up there now a good tip most mechanics know this take your oil cap off to relieve any kind of vacuum and um all right we're going to take it out let's let's drain it So yeah, we didn't want to lower the car down. We're just going to take a ladder and go up there and take the cap off. I hope you're wearing underwear. That ought to help. So when you need a good breaker bar. Wow. That was... A little tighter. What was that that we just heard fall? Probably my sunglasses. Oh. Pieces of oil. No, I don't think so. I, something. I thought something, something fell. Yeah. We should probably should have used a bigger breaker bar. Your sunglasses are on your head. Why well, no? But I don't know. We dropped something. Our will to live. All right. Oh, here we go. What was that? Came off. Again. Oh, oh, it was a uh, uh, one of these little pieces. Okay, on the magnet. Okay, no problem. The trick here is not losing the screw down the hole. <laughs> now, the, we, you should do this while the motor oil is hot, and right now it's not hot. It's been sitting here on the rack, so it's going to take a long time to drain, and we're not going to get a full drain out of it because of that. But it'll be all right. 
Ah, there we go. Now, now we got heavy flow. Now we got one of those heavy flow days. Now remember, there is eight quarts. <laughs> There's several gallons of oil. Oh boy, look at that. I hope this doesn't fill up more than it drains. Yeah, we should have uh, probably put that thing on top of this other deal here. All right, well, there we go. We're draining. Black gold. Texas tea. All right, so this is a basic STP. Oil filter comes with this washer, this small washer, and this copper washer that you want to put on the plug. Put that one right on there. And then we can put that right back in the car. You just kind of want to do these by feel. I'm sure that there's a, an official torque specification for this, but bottom line is you don't want to get it too tight because you don't want it to be like it was before. It just needs to be about, you know, that tight because otherwise you're going to have a hard time getting it off. You know, they put those copper soft crush washers on there for a reason. And you just wipe it clean and then we're going to pull this uh, cartridge out. So the little center plug in the middle of this, um, full filter cartridge. You can take that out and you can drain the filter before you take the filter off, which is what we did. And uh, that way, when you take the cartridge out, it's not totally full of oil, but it's there's still gonna always be drippage. So you always wanna have your bucket and your thing ready. There's always gonna be a mess. You can't get away from it. Probably the filter itself is up in there, stuck. You gotta pull it down. You know, because it seals in there. That's what that other little washer's for. Ah, there we go. Got a gander at that system. Wow. Nice. All right, so you pull that nasty old filter out of there. So we're gonna replace this outer ring with the new ring. I gotta be honest, this one looks better than the one they gave us, but <laughs> we'll change it. Which, uh, you know, use a little screwdriver or a little pick or something. Pick Use that on your teeth later. I also give you this other little donut ring that's gonna go seal that drain if you wanted to. Which I don't think is a problem, but we could do it. Might as well. I don't know if it's too tight to do it though with the by hand. You can just grab it, you know. We're covering up our website here. There we go. So yeah, if you want to check out the other stuff we do, bobsproptrop.com. So we're going to get this little ring. One ringy dingy. Yeah, that one's pretty gnarly. And then uh, put a new one on. Get it all nice and lubed before you slide it on. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, okay. And then it just goes right in, right into the, uh, just down there. It's a dirty job. Somebody's got to do it. That somebody's you. Now, before you put that in, we're going to do an old mechanic trick. There we go. We're going to fill this thing up. Not fill it up but we're gonna put some oil in it to get it uh you know pre-mowed pre-lubed just a little bit not too much i think you think that's enough nah, put some more in there put some more in there i don't want to 
spill any of it. Yeah, we're good. Let's see what we got there. That's probably good. That's it. A little more. Oh, okay. a little on That's the rim right there. There we go. Yeah. It's like putting syrup on your pancakes. And then that goes right up in there. Should be wearing plutonium suits for this. Yeah. Don't worry, it's all lead lined. I traded some Libyan, some pinball machine parts for this oil change. Now we don't want to over torque it too much. Because it's plastic, so remember it's a plastic carrier. Just want to get it snug, you know, just a little bit. Nothing too crazy. If you hear a pop or a crack, too you're, far. you've uh, gone too far and uh, you're now stranded. Yeah, it's probably an $8,200 plastic cover. That's probably $10,000. <laughs> no. Nah. There we go. Now you can wipe this down just with rags. Uh, if you want to be a real rock star, you could spray it down with a little brake cleaner. Or, uh, or um, don't use the red brake cleaner because that's bad for your seals. You can use the non-caustic style or just um, some other kind of cleaner. And this is why we have this tray. This is a, a tray that you would put underneath an appliance such as a washer machine. Oh. And we use that to catch a little uh, goop. Oh. All this fluid is bad yeah. for seals. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there you go. Well, that's a handy little chair. Yeah. Glad I bought that. Costco. Bang. All right. We're going to come over just a tad. So this basically attaches to the uh, back of the cradle. Hold that. Onto the body. Hold that right there. Can you hold this whole thing up for a second? And grab the correct hardware. <laughs> Remember when Bugs Bunny told Daffy to hold up the Leaning Tower of Pisa? He's like, help! <laughs> Camp! I think it was, it was either Daffy Duck or... I think it was Daffy Duck. Yeah. yeah. Help! Oh yeah, because... Yeah, I would have been there. That's hilarious. Okay, now this is a big engine. It's gonna hold, you know, like over eight quarts of oil. Now, what you're gonna wanna use is this 5W30 Mobile One. This is what I use, it's a good synthetic. I like to put a little bit of additives in there. And the thing about it is when you get an older engine, a lot of mechanics know this trick. You can put in a little bit of a thicker oil, especially when you're in a hotter climate like I am here in Dallas, Texas, where I am. So sometimes I'll put a little bit of Lucas Oil Stabilizer in there. You have to be really careful with other engines like the Dodge and Chrysler multi-displacement engines that alternate between four and eight cylinders and things like that. You have to use exactly the oil that's uh, meant to go in there. Otherwise, you can cause a lot of problems. And you don't want to use a, a thicker oil in certain motors that have really restrictive uh, overhead drain areas in the tops of the heads, you know, that it can, you know, slow down your flow of oil. So I'm gonna use this mobile one, it's a 530. You can get this at Sam's at Costco really cheap. And it's a great oil, and you should be changing your oil every three to 5,000 miles anyway. All right, so the next thing you gotta do is you're gonna have to reset all of your stuff. Now, you know, um, when you hold down your reset button on your trip meter, it will cycle through this little range here. And then this screen will pop up back and you can cycle through your different thing, brake fluid. Now I've actually already reset all of these things. I didn't think to record it, but I'm gonna go back in and show you how to do it. And um, you have to have uh, a computer. Let's see, let me hold that, okay. You're gonna have to have, this particular one I have is called a Foxwell uh, NT650. And it quite frankly, isn't the best one, but you can go into, let's see here, like oil reset, enter. And the car is running right now. So you can go select Rolls Royce, whoops, enter. Sorry. Establishing connection. 
you know, I wish I could, you, it's hard to hold this thing and film at the same time. CB, CBS reset. And then you can go through and you can reset your engine oil and the brakes and the coolant and all those things, which I've already done. So like you would select, um, you know, engine oil and then, um, I don't know if it'll do it while the engine's running because you have to do it with just the key on. There it is. Availability, 99%. Service counter, 14. So it counts how many times you've changed the oil. So I don't want to do it again, but I've already reset it. But anyway, um, you really need to have something like this. And there's much better ones out there. This one's just a cheaper one. But that's what you're going to need. You need to reset all of your stuff on the dash. Now, I still have a few dash lights on here that I still need to take care of you know some uh restraint systems and the parking brake and whatnot and so once those are fixed then uh we'll be all done <laughs>